Okay, let's clean. Well, not, not this clean, okay? We need to get the bar from the floor to our shoulders, okay? Of Olympic weightlifting, this is the grittiest lift. Okay? It is technical, and it's very important to have technique, but when you compare it to the snatch, strength is the, is the main winner here. But we're going to go over the technique uh, from, from, again, zero to being able to clean something at the end of this. So let's get to it. So the first things first, the front rack. Uh, in the previous video, we, we, we kind of went over the front rack as it pertains to the jerk. It's very similar here, same, same exact concepts. Um, I'm gonna walk you through it, you know, just as a brief overview. What we're looking for is a grip slightly outside our thigh. That's gonna be our clean grip here, okay? We want the bar to be above the clavicle. We want as much of the hand on the bar as we can have, and then we're gonna have the elbows forward. If you're struggling to get this, we're gonna get the bar overhead and try to find that spot, okay? Again, watch that previous video so you can get more knowledge on that, okay? Once we have this position solidified, we're gonna move on to our first drill and that is the hang muscle clean. Just like the hang muscle snatch and you know the snatch in general, we're gonna keep thinking about rolling our wrists underneath here, just like this. Okay, so we're always gonna be thinking that. We're gonna be thinking elbows high, just like we had in the snap. Okay, when we're ready, we'll drop the elbows underneath and we'll catch. Now, what I've noticed a lot with beginners when I teach them this is when they turn over, there's this big drop right there. Right? We go up to the eyes and then it falls down. We wanna try and make that as snug as possible. I can almost place the bar to that front rack, just like that. So now we're gonna add in the front squat. So we might have to get our feet just a little bit wider here. And again, we're pulling that muscle snatch. Now, while we're pulling the elbows high, we're gonna drop underneath, trying to keep our elbows from dropping, right, to this position. Really gonna reach up like that. And we're gonna stand, okay? Up high, and we'll squat. Trying to stay connected to the bar. Okay, now we're gonna move the feet. And if you know the clean at all or have seen it, you've seen people make noise with their feet, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda pull that bar up just like we've been doing and if we can, drop underneath. If we can't do that, that's tough, okay? That's called the tall clean. Just like this. So you're starting the bar with the arms and dropping and moving the feet. If you can't do that, just jump. Okay, you might have to now hinge a little bit. Boom, boom. Just like that, nice and easy. Okay, just like in the snatch, there, there is contact and we need to establish it early on. Okay, just like the snatch, we are gonna do a contact drill, except instead of hitting the bar off of our hips or where our belt line is, we're gonna hit it off of the high thigh. Okay, always when we're standing in the clean in this stand, stood up position, don't wanna let our shoulders round and the bar get pulled low. So always be thinking pull up high like this. Now, we're gonna bend at the knees and hinge at the hips. The bar is gonna go away from us. That's okay, this is part of the drill. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bring that bar away and hit. You can already hear the bar rattling just off of that tiny little hit. Just develop that. And slowly, I can get the bar higher and higher until now I'm dropping into the clean. Okay, but it starts with that minor contact, right like this. Boom, nice and small. I can build it up and then I can go. All right, so now we're gonna take that contact drill and just move it to below the knees. Again, just like all of these other videos, I'm giving you a progression, but
But the moment you get stumped, it's important that you take steps backwards. So if, if this drill you're struggling to do, go back and do the previous drill and try to bridge that gap naturally. You might be jumping too quickly to the next progression. So here it is. We have our contact drill. We build up that momentum and then we can clean, okay? Now we're just gonna take that contact drill and just go below the knees, back up, make contact, okay? Here's our contact drill. Now we're just gonna go below the knees, make contact, and stand up. So now we're gonna do the same drill, but instead of our target being our mid shin, we're actually gonna have the tactile target, tactile target, uh, in these plates. Okay, so I'm going to both bend the knees and hinge at the hips, keeping my chest up, keeping my back straight, nice and slow. Touch, slow, and explode. Okay, notice how I didn't touch and just go. Okay, it's important that we go slow, touch, slow, contact, catch. So the previous drill, uh, we used those plates as our tactile feedback. Um, but this is, this is the same drill, but now we're using the actual plates on the bar as tactile feedback. Uh, I don't want you guys to take the jump from barbell to 135 or barbell to you know, 95 pounds. If you can and there's a 10 pound plate around that's this size, then yes, go ahead uh, and, and set that up but we're gonna do the same exact drill, nothing changes, except instead of the bar touching those plates, these plates are gonna to touch the floor. So we're gonna stand up nice and tall, okay? Trying to keep our chest up, don't let it round as we go down. Nice and control, we're gonna tap very gently, we're gonna control and explode. Now we're pretty much cleaning, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend that we're, we still have the bar in our hands and we're gonna do a touch and go, but we don't actually have the bar in our hands, okay? So key things here, we're gonna set up with the bar uh, maybe closer to the shin a little bit uh, than when we compare it to the snatch. So in this, with the snatch, we're back here with the bar over like the toes more. Maybe during the clean, just a little bit further forward. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, again, cover the bar with our knees keeping our chest up, keeping it straight. We're gonna go grab like that, okay? So we're gonna go down slow. Remember, we're pretending the bar is on our hands. Nice and slow. Grab the bar. Nice and slow. Explode and go. We're slowly trying to bridge that gap from being in a standing posture to now having dead weight and we have to develop that power. In a lot of occasions, guys, when the bar is in our hands, we can get a really good posture. So when we go through the range of motion that we need, uh, it's much easier, right? St stand with the bar in your hands. You can get really good posture. Then you go down. You can maintain that posture. But now, all of a sudden, the bar is on the floor. And so it's key that we don't just, okay, break down everything. Because now we got to build it back up. Why do all that, okay? Try and maintain that posture. Go down, keeping the arms long. Okay, we don't want to be too far back in the heels. We don't want to pull our chest way up like this and pull vertically, okay? We need to be a little bit on top of the bar, just like this. Okay, we'll be right here. Take a breath in. So that's called a static start. Uh, and just like in the snatch, I taught you the static start first, I wanna teach you the dynamic start. Because if you look at the, the broad scale of competitors and the best weightlifters of all time, most of them do what's called a dynamic start. And what we're doing in a dynamic start is we're loading our muscles with what's called the stretch reflex, okay? If we take it from a static position, we're just, in that isometric hold and we just have to push. But it's like if you take a rubber band and you pull it at the last second, you can get that extra elasticity. It's the same, same concept here. 
So we're gonna do everything the same way we just did. We're gonna set up, knees cover the bar, chest comes forward a little bit, chest up right here. Now, we're gonna take a breath in, lift our hips just a little bit, lower them and go. You are now cleaning from the floor. Let me grab my trusty two pood belt here in giraffe print. Out now. Get yourself one. Now, um, my thoughts on when to use the belt. I actually, at first, I think it might be good to just get used to it, to, to understand how it feels and understand its purpose and then start playing with lifting without it for a while and then adding it in later. That's what you see a lot of weightlifters do. You might lift beltless for a while, then build up weight and add the belt. So when you're clean and jerking, guys, you want it to be just snug enough so you can feel when you brace, when you push out with the with your belly at all directions, like three-dimensionally, you can feel it push against you. I don't really like to put it that tight so that it like limits me. I almost like the fact that I have to push in order to feel something. And like I said, just develop getting used to it, then maybe take it off, and then as the weight gets heavier, then you can add it into your training. A little shaky there. 315, not so bad. It's a far cry from my best, but we'll take it for today. So that is the clean. Just a gritty, tough movement. Pretty technical, but once you get the technique down, it's all upstairs. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to catch the rest of this instructional, and I'll see you in the next video.